What's up everybody, welcome back to another video. This is the fourth video in our HTML tutorial for beginners playlist. In the first video we covered some of the very basics of HTML, such as the tools you would need in order to get started. In the second video we started to actually code a little bit with some of the very basic HTML tags. In the third video we covered the head section, and now we're going to go over some of the HTML5 specific tags. And you can already see some of them over here on my website pixelmerb.com. In this example code snippet, we have the header tag, we have the nav tag, the section tag, the article tag, we have the aside and the footer. These are HTML5 specific tags. Previously you would have just used div tags. So let me go over some of these and I'll do so in the text editor. Also, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification icon so whenever I create a new video, you'll be notified. All right, so let's go to our editor and I'm using VS Code for this tutorial. This is where we left off. So what I'm gonna do here is I wanna select everything. I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna go to the root of my HTML folder. I'm gonna create a new file. And for this one, I'm just going to call it HTML5.HTML. Press enter. I'm going to paste what we copied to our clipboard over here. Now, when we go up, I'm going to go to the title section. I'm going to change that to HTML5. And I'm going to put in tags. Save that. Normally, you would change the description in order to be very specific for this particular HTML document or web page, but I'm going to leave the description just for reference so that way you can see what this meta description is about. I'm going to scroll down over here and I'm going to work within the body section right here. I'm going to take the H1 and the paragraph tags, get my multi line cursor here. I'm just going to indent those. When I started off this video, I said that previously we would have just used div tags. So this is what that would look like. You would use a div tag. I'm going to cut that closing pair off and put it over here. Okay. All right, so basically this would be a way for us to section off content. This is regular HTML. This is a generic container. This has no semantic meaning whatsoever. It's not providing any information to the browser. It's not providing any information to the search engines. It's just a generic container. And you're still going to use it. You're going to see it every now and then within code. It should be used as a last resort. For instance, we have other HTML5 specific tags that provide more semantic meaning. And this is important for accessibility reasons, for devices for the visually impaired, screen readers, things of that nature. So let's say this was going to be an article over here. Instead of using a div, we can actually use the article tag itself. And this provides more semantic meaning to the web browser and search engines and screen readers and things of that nature. This is an HTML5 tag itself. It defines an article in the document and you can often find that there might be one article on a particular web page, or you might find that, say, on a blog roll page, you might have a bunch of articles with snippets there, like maybe one paragraph of an excerpt of that article. So you might see one long article or multiple articles. Now, very quickly, and we're going to go over headings in a different video, but you would typically not have more than one H1 in a particular web page or HTML document. Technically, you can in different sections, but the general rule of thumb is you want to save your H1 for your most important item within that page. So it might be the title of the page or it might be your website name if it's the home page or the blog row page. So for this one, maybe we call that H2. Same thing over here. And then we can have an H1 up here. Let's say a site title. And then we could put a paragraph down here. Websites typically have a tagline as well. All right, so that's just getting that out of the way. So now we have the article tag here, which is an HTML5 tag that provides more information and more meaning to the browsers. Now you might also see a section tag 
Now, this is a little bit tricky. The section tag is also a generic container and it can be used in various places. It could be used to contain a group of articles or it could be used inside of an article to contain a group of information that's related to each other. So it's very situational how you would use this. But you would find that you use this in place of divs, you know, whenever you're going to try to group content together. So let's say you have a blog roll page here and you have a bunch of articles. You can put that within a section. It's a section of articles. This provides a little bit more semantic meaning in terms of the grouping of your content and should be used when possible instead of divs. Now, what about a sidebar? When you go to the browser, let's say we go here, you see I have a sidebar here and another sidebar here. How do you get that? Besides the styling of it that'll actually place it in its proper place, we have another tag that we could use for the sidebars. And this can actually be used in any area that could be a secondary area that could be providing supportive information or secondary type information that is not the main content of that page. And that would be the aside. So this HTML5 tag can be used for a sidebar. What can we put in a sidebar? It could be any information. If we go back to the browser, you see I have a table of contents, table of contents, some images, things of that nature. So we can put a list or a navigation there. So for lists, we could use the unordered list tag. This is not HTML5, this is just regular HTML. It's been around forever. With the list item, you could say item one, So now we're going to save this and now we see we have in our body section, we have a section tag, HTML5, we have the article tag, inside of the article tag we have our H2 tags, these are our headings, and then we have our paragraphs, closing section tag, then we have our side with an unordered list with some list items. Save it, go back to the browser, let's go back here. So instead of index.html, Remember, we call this HTML5.html. So I'm just going to double click the index part of the URL and put in HTML5. And now we see we have the site title, the tagline, heading one. Well, we could actually change this because we changed it to heading two. So if we inspect that element, see it's an H2 paragraph. We also see we have the article there. We have no errors showing up here. I'm going to view page source. Copy all. I'm going to validate this. And it says we should be using more heading sections, which we're going to be doing. But other than that, there's no warnings or errors. So that's good. But we see that we have our areas that are a little bit better organized. And we're going to go into layout, you know, document formatting, things of that nature, and some templates. But this is how you can use HTML5 in order to organize your content. And there's more HTML5 tags to go over. Let's go back to our editor. But before we do so, you might be asking, why is it that it looks like this and it's not styled out? That's because we haven't applied styling to it. This is just HTML. Okay, back to the editor. All right, so what next? Well, after the aside, you can have your footer section. And in your footer section, you can have various other elements as well. You can have a copyright notice, you can have some extra navigation, you can have a contact section. There's a bunch of things you can put in there and throughout the course of this project we'll be doing that. Remember what we're going to get this to look like is going to be an actual website but we first have to get our foundation and the semantics of HTML and HTML5 down pat. So this pretty much defines the footer section of our HTML document. So typically in the past, as I mentioned, you would have this as a div, this would be a div, this would be a div, that would be the closing div, that could be a div, and this could be a div. But that doesn't provide much meaning to the browser or screen readers, things of that nature. What other HTML5 tags are there? Well up here, let's say we have our site title and tagline. We could have our header tag as well. 
and then inside our header or outside depending on where you want to put it matter of fact I'm going to keep it on the outside for now we could have our nav tag right there so this could be for our navigation of our website and here we could put in some links so I'm going to put in a tab here and I'll put in some placeholders just for now so for a link that's going to be used for navigation of our website let's say in the top section you're going to have your most important links of your site so we'll have our lesser than symbol a href equals quotation marks and for now we're going to use the hashtag so this is going to signify that it's not really going anywhere as of yet then we're going to have a close off there and in between the opening and closing HTML tag we're going to put in the actual link name so let's say this is going to go home to the home page of our website I'm going to copy this a couple of times and now let's say this one is going to go to a contact page and this one's going to go to a blog page right now it's not pointing anywhere it's just using the placeholder and actually this one we could have a point to the index.html file so let's save this let's see how that looks go back to the browser and let's reload and now you see we have a quasi navigation menu over here now these two links are not going anywhere but this one is okay and now this is where remember I said it can get tricky because we're using the section tag here but there's another tag that we could use as well so I'm going to comment this out you want to make sure you comment both the opening and closing tags I'm going to put in the main tag let me cut that out go down here so the main tag can also be used to group together your main content. We save that. Let's go back to the browser. Let's see if anything's changed. Reload. Nothing seems to have changed. We have no errors within our developer tools. Let's look at the page source. And we copy everything. You're going to find in the beginning that this is going to be helpful in order to check your content. So here it says that we have no errors within our documents. Now what if we just use the section? Would we get an error? Let's see. Let's comment this one out. Comment that out. Uncomment that one. And that one. Let's save it. Let's go back to the browser. Let's reload the page. Look at the page source. You see we have the section there. And it shows here that the section lacks the headings, which is what we had before. So that's going to be one thing you may want to pay attention to. Again, we'll go over headings more in depth later on, but overall, that's something you want to keep an eye out for. Back to the editor. So for now, we're going to stick with the main and keep it that way. Now, if you were using the section within the article, let's try that out. Let's see how that works. If we go inside the article. Let's say we have our section tag here I'm going to cut that I'm going to put it over here but now let me give us some space now let's say that this is going to be the main part of this section right there and again I want to go over headings more in depth later on but let's say this section was about cars in general and then you had a sub part of it or sub content that also related to cars, but like categorized or, you know, a subset of cars or something like that. So let's say we have, well, let's put that to two. I want to properly represent these. Okay, so now we have the H2 there and an H3. And then let's say we had a subset or a subsection for the H3. So let's copy this again. Let's make this a four. Okay, so it might get a little bit confusing at this point, but stick with me. Throughout this tutorial, you're going to learn when to use headings in their proper sections and things of that nature. This is just for demonstration. All right, so now we have the section inside of our article. Save that. Let's go back to the browser. Let's reload. Okay, so now we have the heading 2, heading 3, heading 4. Copy our page source. Paste it. Let's check now. And we still get the warning. And it's because we should probably put this 
heading above this section. Let's try that and see if it makes it go away. Let's cut that out. Let me try to format this a little bit just to make it a little bit easier to read. Save that. X out of this one. Let's reload. Copy our page source. Go back here. And let's check. And now that warning disappeared. So now we know that in this situation, we need the H2 outside of the section, but inside of the article. So again, you're going to have to use trial and error with this. And it's part of the learning process. The beauty of using dynamic coding languages is that you get to set up your templates. And we'll be doing that within our PHP, part of this full stack development series. And then you won't have to worry about doing all of this stuff manually. And you're going to see why that's a lot simpler. But now we have our main on the outside article, our heading, our section. And these are HTML5 tags. The heading is a regular HTML tag. Paragraphs are regular HTML tag. But the aside and the nav and the header are HTML5 as well. Now there's more HTML5 tags that we could use. And throughout this video tutorial, I'll introduce you to them. But these you're going to see on a consistent basis. Other HTML5 tags could be used for video, for embeds, for audio, for the canvas, things of that nature. But these are the ones that you should be familiar with as you'll see these the most often. And again, they provide more semantic meaning to browsers and to screen readers, which is going to be vital for accessibility and for better grouping of your content on your web page. All right, so in the next video, we're going to be talking about the document structure, which is going to be an extension of what we just covered now. And we're going to be talking about layouts. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification icon so that way when I release a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Happy coding.